getting comfy, got my dog, got you guys, got Kenji, let's get started. Today I'm going to talk about the man, the legend, the illustrious Kenji. He has taken over the data science world by storm, at the very least in YouTube. If you search anything data science related, he is there. He is also a good friend of mine and we've talked several times. I'm already making plans to visit him in Hawaii when I eventually get into that nomad life. But as of right now during the pandemic, all I can say is let's do some low tech virtual collaborations by just talking about his most popular video, how I would learn data science if I had to start all over. By the end of this, you're gonna answer questions like, is Kenji a normal data point? Is this video relatable enough, especially now in the current day and age? And finally, how do I smash the like button so that I can defeat the YouTube algorithm with Andrew, with Professor Meatball, and with you guys. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. And now, let's get going. data science has been extremely popular and I wanted to expand on that and talk about how I would learn data science if I had to start again from absolutely ground zero. So Ken G, also known as Kenneth B. Jingleheimerschmidt G, is a person who builds off of his own work. He is making strides into his own progress as a data scientist and then he recommends it off of how he is building. That's why the 66 Days of Data Challenge worked so well, because he was actually creating the 66 Days of Data along with you, learning alongside you, and then promoting it as part of a method that works. Hey, he's a data scientist, so it means that what he recommends, he wants to try first, and that's commendable. Things have definitely changed since the start of my data science journey, so I wanted to provide a current roadmap. I like the old school Kenji style. When was this video made? Uh, oh, <laughs> earlier this year. <laughs> um, so May 2020, Ken had the hair, the glasses. Uh, the... Let's just, let's look at his books real quick. Mathletics, we have Ultra Learning. All right, made a video about that. Sprawl Ball, assuming some sort of sabermetrics. Uh, sports related data science. Uh, why We Sleep, Thinking in Bets. Uh, what? I'm gonna say weapons of math destruction and the 1% rule and a cactus. Good sprawl, this man reads, uh, at the very least all his books that he wants to show off is underneath his cactus. Uh, and I like the I like this athleisure sportswear already. Now, now that we've um, sent him to the burn board for all the, the burns, the epic burns that we just did, uh, let's talk about his content. I wanna caveat this video by saying that learning is a little bit different for everyone. My word is definitely not gospel, and there's a good chance that you might find something that works a little bit better for you. The thing about Ken behind closed doors is that he is not money motivated. Otherwise, with 100,000 subscribers, you think he would have started a course by now. Uh, all of these other data scientists who have come under fire, like Joma, who has created, uh, in partnership with Tech Lead, so not entirely his thing, uh, $1,000 courses where they teach data science in the same way that you can find data science resources online for free. Uh, Kenji has not done that. He's also never started a Patreon. He's never also never capitalized on the fact that he can take money from his viewers, uh, which is very commendable. Something that lends to his credibility and his credentials so that we can learn as much as we can from him entirely free. So that's something that I can already say, whatever he's about to show you is going to be unaffiliated at the very least, or is gonna be something that you can take with a grain of salt that he has passed through without any financial ties. The first thing that you need to be familiar with is programming. Most people do this in either Python or R. You're free to start with either one, but I generally prefer Python. It's so much more commonly asked for in job descriptions that this is a dangerous slope for people who have the choice. If you started with R, go with R. But if you have the choice and you don't know either, definitely go with Python. This is something that I want to strongly emphasize about Ken's choice here. Uh, also, I like that he's uh, doing multiple camera angles. People, you got some, you got some extra camera angles for us? You can look over there, over here. No, you like this set? Okay, I'm just gonna stay here. You'll also wanna have a very basic understanding of statistics to start. A very basic understanding of statistics might not cut it. Whatever job that Kenji is describing, he is describing probably a more business stakeholder related data science job. Something that takes in a sense of statistics, just like a thumb in the air kind of 
gut check of statistics uh, and then goes with the flow. Uh, and I don't even see him talking about math as of just yet. So the job that he's trying to describe is not the common machine learning engineer analogous data science job. That's okay, but sometimes you can easily auto fail an interview if someone asks you uh, if the null value of a A-B test is within a 95% confidence interval, uh, what does that mean? So the core breakdown of what Ken is trying to say is that statistics is important. Yes, a basic sense of statistics is going to get you partway through a business-related data science job, but not a more technical data science position. I think you should learn just enough programming and statistics to be able to start exploring your own projects in general. Really agree. I think that Kenji has really hit the nail on the head that you need to understand enough basic programming, maybe just a week's or two weeks worth, in order to start your own projects. And if you once you start your own projects, then you have the ability to learn on the fly in the way that normal data scientists learn in industry. Also, who is Harold? He has a, he has a sign in the back of the room called Harold Street. But his name's not Harold, is it? Harold G? No, it's Kenji. After developing a foundation, I would explore Kaggle.com, which I just mentioned before. This website, in my opinion, is the single best place to learn data science on the internet. They have the micro courses, again, which I previously mentioned. Kaggle is a great place to learn alongside others in a incredibly practical sense. So that translates to Kaggle will help you become a real data scientist by practicing the real data cleaning and munging that other data scientists do on a regular basis. However, Kaggle is not going to help you pass interviews about data structures, about algorithms, or recall of trivia, like time complexity, or SQL syntax, or Python syntax, some of the important pieces of passing an interview. And my perspective is that you need to pass the interview in order to be able to get your first data science job in order to learn on the go. I was never really that big into Kaggle because my first interaction with data science was at a data science position. So the most important thing about the Kaggle course is that if you are trying to substitute that for a real data science position, you will not be able to translate directly that knowledge into the interview room itself. The great thing about this is that it's a public forum for people to submit their analysis of shared data sets. I like how agnostic his approach is to the data science attitude, right? How much time do you spend? Well, 50% of your time here and 50% of your time here. Never telling you exactly how much time you should spend per day. I will add to that in saying, if you have the time, make sure to spend at least an hour or an hour and a half a day, right? That's a, in addition to the idea that 15 minutes a day for the 66 days of data challenge is enough for your brain to constantly challenge itself and grow and learn a specific concept. But if you want to be able to cram all of the important data science stuff in your brain, if you are following his 50% project-based and theoretical-based learning, you should really be committing at least 90 minutes because that is how much time you have for Netflix anyway, for cooking, for eating, for eating out. Try this. If you have the budget for it, instead of going out and hiring a boot camp, uh, order in. Don't spend the time that you would have wasted cooking, cleaning, and preparing a meal. Uh, order in pay the extra 10, 15 bucks, and then reallocate the 90 minutes that you would have spent making that meal and enjoying it to data science. Does that make sense? Yeah, because that is time that all of us have, 99.9% .9 of us, because as busy as you can get, you're probably still doing meal prep and cooking. Or in my specific situation, you're probably doing it very inefficiently. So if you have the time to reallocate, do that instead of your sleep or your social time or your unwinding time. Always make time for mental health and meditation. Eating and cleaning is a premium and it's not that expensive of a premium on top of just groceries and your time. <laughs> the time value of work is something that I'll come back to. You should go through the source code of all these different things and try to grasp how they're constructed. Frankly, if you can understand the source code for an algorithm, you functionally understand the math behind it. Uh... <laughs> I like, his, I like his approach because he's probably talking about specific, uh, I can imagine that you can put gradient descent on, uh, in code and then you can try to understand that gradients are just a, a set of partial derivatives of a loss function, right? Uh, that is something that you could theoretically tie together. It's hard to have the curse of knowledge because Ken obviously understands a lot of these topics and now is wanting to make it as simple as possible to understand. I would say probably it's, it's not that simple, 
uh, to be able to look at code and immediately understand the mathematics behind it. But I agree with him that you don't necessarily need to understand the math behind it. Uh, when he means functionally understand, he probably means um, step by step logistically how the mathematics works. Um, being able to tie that into the more theoretical uh, is going to probably take a little bit more education, a little bit more time, uh, probably sitting down with a nice uh, linear algebra and calculus book. You should try to explore building a linear regression or a k-means clustering algorithm from just basic Python components. What is this code? It's like wine, summary data, smooth tannic rating, soft acidic rating, dry sweet rating. Send me this code, Ken. That's awesome. Wine feature engineering, wine machine learning, cool. <laughs> you should try to explore building a linear regression or a k-means clustering algorithm from just basic Python components. I really like that idea because the main idea behind being able to have these in-box, like straight out of the box solutions in scikit-learn, TensorFlow, PyTorch is that maybe at the end of the day, you're gonna be like a senior data scientist, you're gonna be a manager, and you're not gonna understand where did these boxes come from? Where did all these pre-made packages come from? And where did all these models that have already been pre-trained, uh, how does the math actually work? Being able to understand at least step-by-step step some sort of cursory knowledge of exactly how a gradient descent updates or exactly how a loss function works within the context of how machine learning works overall can really help you become a more well-rounded data scientist and probably isn't going to take as long as understanding the general sense of how uh, linear algebra works and how to multiply tensors. At this point, you should have already started to delve into more advanced projects. You do this to stretch out your skill set. Advanced projects are one where you strive to find unique insights. This can be fairly intimidating, but if you collect your own data, it can also be relatively easy. Advanced projects, I'll probably just throw in my two cents here, is something that you deploy by yourself. And the best case of a model that you are scraping your own data, connecting in the back end with EDA, and then deploying it ultimately is Ken's Data Science from Scratch playlist, which I will link down below. It is really good to be able to get your feet wet with a end-to-end -end project. I would imagine that that is, in his eyes and my eyes, an advanced project where you're doing most of the heavy lifting. So good on you, Ken. Make sure that you're starting this project probably three to four weeks into your journey, if not earlier, right? Because if you are always just one step away from actually putting your skills into practice, then you're always going to be scared and you're always afraid to take the next step. I highly recommend making your analysis public on Kaggle, GitHub, your blog, or Tableau Public. One of the things about advanced projects and blogging about it is that you are able to then share and become a Kenji in your own respect. A microcosm of 100 followers on any platform or even 100 subscribers on YouTube means that that's 100 people in a room where it's probably the biggest party you've ever been to um, that you hosted and you invited 100 people. Like, I can't imagine that many people in uh, a closed space, especially in the pandemic. So remember, if you can start building and educating, that is gonna be worth exponentially more in the near future. Not as near as you might think when it comes to YouTube uh, and YouTube growth, but definitely nearer than if you never put yourself out there to begin with. Now, there are a few other details that I think are important on this learning journey. First is how much time you need to spend learning. I think that working around an hour per day would be sufficient to learn the foundations of data science for a year. Hey, it turns out he actually gets to the amount that you need to work per day. I'm glad that both of us arrived at the around the same amount of time that you should put in because logistically you won't be able to pick up enough data science if you put in less than an hour per day uh, within a short enough amount of time. Like learning a language, data science is about fluency. So if you don't kickstart your growth with a lot of work in the beginning, it, then it's like paying off debt. You're gonna have a lot more principle and a lot more interest in the end. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Nicole? Are you a CPA? I think it makes sense. I don't suggest studying for less than 30 minutes at a time or for more than three hours. And if you spend too much time, I think that there's a pretty high chance of burnout. Burning out is a real problem. You can imagine that making YouTube videos or trying to learn a new language where Duolingo's duo bird is trying to kidnap and hold your family hostage or even just teaching an old dog some new tricks. Any of these things, if you put too much time into it, you can easily burn out. So treat it as a hobby. Hack your behavior to make it seem like this is something that is going to ultimately really benefit you in the future, 
but so would learning how to sing, taking singing lessons, so would learning how to make birdhouses, right? If you make it low pressure, low stakes, it becomes a lot easier to treat it as something that you can't burn out with. Can you imagine burning out with building too many birdhouses? Can you? Can you imagine? No. A good goal should be three things. Measurable, something you have complete control over, and finally, it should have a time constraint. I think accountability is extremely important, and you can hold yourself accountable in a couple different ways. That's important. And actually, if you if you zoom in on some of the things that he has on his vision board, he has the number of views and the number of subscribers he wanted to accomplish. By the way, big congrats on 100,000 very recently and the silver play button. The big thing about Ken is that he accomplishes and shoots through his goals, right? And it's because of his behavior. But the example he's giving is that you can't think you're going to understand a lofty concept like PCA. Uh, just like you can't control how many subscribers you get over a certain amount of time. You can only say, I'm going to commit to uploading a video a day for the entire month of December, or say that you're going to start really upping the editing quality or the, the content quality of the production stuff that you can make. For YouTube, as an example, this is an important factor, is that you can only truly control the minute day-to-day -day behavior of yourself and feel proud whenever you continue to build a streak. Just like a Snapchat streak, you should be able to continue to have that momentum push you forward. And it doesn't matter what you're doing, especially if it's learning data science. I'm perfectly fine with either of these approaches. You know, you can tell one of your friends, you can have an accountability partner. You can also use some of these social groups to actually maintain your accountability as well. Hopefully this video will give you a clear path on how to navigate this field. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey. Thanks, Ken. So overall, I think the main three takeaways is one, make sure to be able to set accomplishable goals. It doesn't matter what you're learning, but setting goals like I will get a job in the next three months is a lot less actionable, a lot less specific and day-to-day -day behavior hackable than saying I'm going to study a specific concept of machine learning every single day. Like that is something that is going to be able to have you hold accountability to yourself. Because ultimately, the way that the ocean of the job market ebbs and flows is ultimately out of your control. Number two is to focus on the statistics, please. Something that is a common thread between Joma's video and Kenji's video. If you skimp on the statistics, if you only barely understand what a Bayesian theorem is, if you basically understand what a confidence interval is, that's not going to be enough for auto-fail, trivia-based questions you might get on a technical interview. And finally, start to build a community. So I'm gonna say the exact same offer as Ken. Go ahead and put your goals down in the comments below so that the community, the Andrew Moe Money, the Data Leap community can help you keep it. If you also wanna to talk to a private Discord of people who want to keep you accountable, then my Discord server is down below. It is free. It, it is free. Uh, and you can talk to people just like you trying to become a data scientist or perhaps trying to become a six-figure salary in some way or another. Today's trivia question is about gradient descent. What is it? Can you explain to my toddler what gradient descent is? And please, she's, she's sensitive. Push your answer down below just as always and I will pick an answer out of them to get a free consultation. If you want your brand to be featured in a future video, then go ahead and put a screenshot of this video on your Instagram stories, tag me Andrew Mo Money, and you can easily get a chance in the near future. It means a lot that you guys have been with me for this long. My birthday just recently passed. Here are a couple of the highlights. Here is an incredible Dungeon Masters pin. Oh, I love D&D. &D. And here is an incredible Monkey King pendant. I'm a big sucker for the Journey to the West and the Mischievous Monkey. And here is a lovely sweater. It's a turtleneck. It's my very first turtleneck. Uh, here is my Dwayne The Rock Johnson cosplay right over here in this corner. And then finally, this beautiful new addition to the company. His name is going to be Humphrey the Hedgehog for my hedgehog collection. If you want to send me something, I'm thinking about opening up a P.O. box. So put in a comment down below if you would actually send me something in the mail. Something to say, hey, I'm a person and I want you to open up my gift on a live stream or perhaps in a future video. I would be more than happy to do that. And as always, for now, but not for forever, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.
Ice, rice, ice, rice, rice in ice. 